your boy, the Memphis Accelerate, back at you with another exciting episode. Check this out. The show we take a look at, whatever we take a look at, and have ourselves a good old time with it, being a troll deck, rogue deck, casual deck, whatever we want to play, we take it out and we play it. Today, we're taking a look at one of the hardest boss monsters to summon in the game, with the least amount of payout, but you know what? We can do it with this but We're taking a look at Finian the Great Sphinx, old-timey monster from the first Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, and summoning about a little bit tricky, but this deck can do it just fine. And we're combining ourselves these sphinxes with some other level 10 beasts. That's right, we got the Nelaria archetype, which, funnily enough, has some synergy with the sphinxes. It's pretty nutty. So, we got ourselves the Nelaria deck for the most part, which can also go into our Andro Sphinx, Talea, and in our Finny and the Great Sphinx. And we're going to be hitting our opponent really hard with lots of beatdown and stuff. A little bit of control on the side here with some of the cards that we have. And so, that's what we're going to be doing today. We're just going to head out into EDO Pro, that Wild West to Yu-Gi-Oh! Show off this deck, show you how it works, the wombos and the combos, the what-dos and the what-not-dos. We'll have ourselves a good old time. So, as always, if you want the whole deck list, it's going to be at the end of the video. But for now, let's head out into the action and show off what this baby can do. Alrighty, everybody, our first opponent of the day, the card game. Now, with our deck, we, we can go first or second, honestly. It's one of those decks that has that modality. But we prefer to go first just for the setup of all that stuff. Let's see. Opening hands, not too shabby, not too shabby. Very important that we have our Sweet Dreams Nemlaria, though. This is one of the most important cards of the deck, because without Dreaming Nemlaria, it's hard to make the Nemlarias do their thing. But we will get her out on the board. Let's get our Dreaming Nemlaria girl. I have two of my Dreaming Towers, which is a little unfortunate, but... Honestly, that's probably good in case my opponent's playing like back row removal or something that I like. So we're good. So with how the players work, basically we're going to be banishing our extra deck. Most of our extra deck doesn't do much for us. I can use it. I just don't like rely on it. It's kind of like uh, like Dogmaticas to an extent, in a way, or some ritual decks like with Zabor to make Mar. Just basically, we have an extra deck we can use, but we don't need it to do the things we want to do. We're going to go ahead, though, start banishing it. This will play into things later if my opponent lasts long enough. And we're going to summon out all these Nemlaria boys. We're going to summon out Evil Ice Cream Monster, Evil Goo Sheep, and Choco Guile. I tell you, these are supposed to all come from Little Girl's Dreams. They, this is not a normal little girl. It's, it's the lore of the child. She is an evil Sith Lord, if you can believe it. Uh, and yeah, that'll do it for now. We've got ourselves a solid start. I've got my gooey sheep who can protect us from targeting things. Ravel searches the trap, but we already have the trap. And then Choco Goyle, yeah, he, he can just make himself huge. He can make himself rather big. And for now, that, that'll serve us for first turn. Next turn, we can start searching out the Sphinxes, because this lets you search any level 10 beast. And Andrew of Sphinx and Sphinx Delay just happen to be level 10 beast. That's the neat thing about this. So we're up against, I'm going to guess off the top of my head, there's a hero deck. I could be right or I could be wrong. We'll see in a minute what this is. Hard to say. Heroes, a deck that I like to see when people are playing the older hero fusions, but less and less people do that. Let's see what it's do. It's a Telonite Altair and Lyran. Let's see. I can make my monster bigger, but that's not necessary right now. All right. Lyran. And when this is summoned... And a Telonite spell from the deck to the hand, you say. Hmm. Hmm. I think I'll be living with that for now. I could be wrong. I forget what all the Telonite stuff does. I know they have that spell that's relatively... It's like one of the newer cards. Summon a Telonite from the hand of the grave. Targeted Constellar Exceeds. Summon a take a monster that's different rank, but one rank higher. Gotcha. All monsters become dark. Detach material. Discard or summon a. Da, 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 da. Using this guy as material. Uh huh. Uh huh. I'm okay with this thus far because, yeah, he can rank this thing up into a friggin' Triver. Uh, let's see. This card's return all the cards on the field of the hand. Well, I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I'm gonna activate Repator, which is essentially like. Uh, a blanket and a gate. It's kind of like Underworld Goddess of the Public World, ironically enough, considering we're banishing her to do this. But I'm going to negate this thing's effect by tributing my ice cream. Which is fine, because ice cream can revive himself on the grave, so this is the best target for this effect. And what are you going to go for? Time Towering Morganite. Hmm. 
A potent card for certain, for certain. All right, well, your trigger's negated, so I don't know why you're still trying to do effects. Your effects are negat, my friend, for the rest of the turn, even. Now, granted, if he summons anything else, that will not be negated. I'm really just hoping that he has something that, I don't know, special or like targets me, because I can negate that with my gooey sheep. That would be the best thing. We'll see how this goes. I can tell her knights in there. The, 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 upon any form of summoning, does something. Summon it, the archetype. That's what these lot do. All right. I'm going to assume that face down is the counter trap, which I remember is a thing. So, what we're going to do, start with ice cream cone. We don't have any of our stuff for using the extra deck at the moment, so right now I'm just banishing whatever. It doesn't really matter. You know, things like our Dogmatic and Punishment and the like. Useful cards, but nothing we need to have at the moment. So we're going to summon back out Ice Cream. Because he's bigger than Trevor happens to be. We'll special summon another Chocolate Gargoyle. And we're going to activate our Dream Tower again. We're one turn away from getting to use the ultimate in Tex in our deck. And with this, we're going to go ahead and search out Andro Sphinx and Sphinx Talea. I can summon them right now if I want to. Do I really need to? Not a special. Oh, there I go. These are in defense mode. And that just happens to be. <gasps> okay. Um, I... <sighs> I hate it when people do this to me. I was right about doing something cool. Okay. Well, unfortunately, my opponent has surrendered. I mean, we were about to start doing damage. I just want to briefly explain how these guys work. Andro Sphinx, Sphinx Talea. You can special summon them from the hand if you have Pyramid of Light, paying 500, that's cool and all. Uh, it can't attack the turn it's normal or special summon, which kind of sucks, which you know, I wish it didn't have that effect. But when they beat over defensive monsters, you deal damage even to that monster's attack, which is a neat little gimmick. And, you know, if you combine this, Chaos Dragon, and I know, something to flip Chaos Dragon face down, like, oh, that, that would be funny. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't get to see that because my opponent saw the mere sight of these creatures and realized he was screwed. It had nothing to do with the fact this could have made itself 500 for every monster. Yeah, I could have made this 3,500. I could have made that 3,500. That would have been cool, too. But and that's, not the bad, uh, that's not what this deck's about. This is about the Sphinxes. So you get an idea with what this deck is trying to do. At the very least, we're just trying to go for the Demlarius, have them start us off, and then we get into our Sphinxes. Hopefully the Pyramid Light shows up, and then we just start ramming over our opponent. It's pure, simple fun. Doesn't really need to negate things or anything like that to play, to ignore the trap. And so that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go for duel number two. Show off more what this deck can do. All right, he's second opponent. Let's go and do it again. And let's try, okay, we're going second this time. That's okay, I suppose. And, you know, opening hand's not bad. Not perfect, but it's not bad. As long as you have the Dreaming Emlaria, you're good. Because he is our most important card. You can't really play without her. But let's see what we're up against. Noble Knight, Shield Bear, Dogmatic Punishment. An interesting hand. Let's go ahead and start with our Dreaming Emlaria. And do as she do. We're going to go ahead and set up our giant tower of pancakes, must say. It's a very fancy pile of pancakes. I'm more of a, more of a buttermilk myself, but there you go. All right, so the Dreaming Tower of the Princess. And this is exactly why we run the call by. Because you do not want your things getting negated if you can help it. Oh. Negating the negation. Well, that's just plain mean. All right, well, that's how you want this to go, brother. I'm just going to set, if, if the game will let me, I will set all the cards. Now, it's your turn, sir. I mean, I've got my Sphinx still. I really wish I had my Pyramid. The problem with the Pyramid of Light, though, is, is that it doesn't... Well, it doesn't really do anything. Unless you've got the Sphinxes in the hand, it doesn't do you any good. It's a really unfortunate thing. Kind of makes me wish Konami would support uh, the original Sphinxes here, but I don't know if they're ever going to do that, unfortunately. So, what we're going to do here... Hmm, I'm going to start building up into stuff. That's my plan. That is my plan. Let's go ahead and activate our reveal. I'm just going to get him a-going. I'm not going to get the trap. Well, I could get the trap now. That is true. Let's get our uh, Sweet Dreams Demlaria going. Search out. Uh, where is my gooey sheep? I like the gooey sheep. 
Let's get him a going. Go ahead and use our reveal. Sorry, Talia. So far, I'm, I'm discarding these, but I need to. I need to get them on the board. That's what I need to do. And that's what we'll be doing next turn. I feel. My plan is, you know, use my Tim, uh, my Dreaming Tower, get the Sphinxes. I, I will have to wait a turn to attack with them, but if I'm going to be playing this deck, I want to see the Sphinxes on the board. I don't really care how it all else goes. I just want to see Andro and Sphinx Talea on the board, and if my opponent field nukes me, all the better I can summon Thinian, which my constituent Alter Memphis did on stream the other day when we were testing this deck out. So, it is a thing that can happen. It's just, it's it's a little tricky. It's really tricky just because of how finicky it can be. Let's see here now. I could play this, but I really don't need to. I'm good. I'm good. What is this guy playing? I'm very confundled. I think he spent so much time trying to stop me that he's forgotten what cards he's going to need. Okay, so let's get Talea. Let's get Andro. That's very good. Let's go ahead and tribute summon. Couple monsters. Bring out Andrew and Sphinx. Hey, there he is. Now he can't attack this turn, but that's fine. More importantly, I'm just gonna go use Reveal here. And you, you, and I doesn't really matter who I'm banishing. Like I said, extra deck doesn't matter with this deck. It's just like Texan things. Not to be confused with things from Texas. <laughs> Alright, well. That didn't work as well as I hoped it would. Uh, but I can use my repainter here. Let's go ahead and get back one of our cards. Are you just gonna spend the whole duel negating me, sir? Is that the person? Is that the purpose of your deck? It's just negation. Because so far that's all you've done. Just saying. Just saying, third. That's all you've really done. All right. Well. That aside, we'll attack with our chocolate golem, chocolate gargoyle, whatever you want to call him. I just like to call him chocosaur sometimes. And we'll end our turn, because again, I can't attack with the Sphinx turn or something, which I think is silly. But you have to remember, this was made back in like Gen 1, Dual Masters, Dual Monsters, <laughs> Dual Monsters. Uh, so it's, it's kind of like with the tunes, like the original tunes, and my opponent will surrender. <sighs> my, I, I don't know what's going on today. We'll probably have to do a spare duel as well. Because so far, we're getting into the Nimlarius, we're getting into the Sphinxes even, but my opponents are, they're seeing the Sphinxes and giving up, because I, I think they just can't process that someone's summoning these creatures. At least that's my headcanon as to what's going on. But let's go ahead and keep, we're, we're going to keep dueling. we got time for at least a couple more duels. And we're going to keep showing off this deck, because come hell or high water, I want to summon these Sphinxes. No matter what, I want to see them both get destroyed and some Infinian. That's what I want to see happen. All right, yeah, everybody, our third opponent, the fight in third as it is. Now let's just keep going at it. You know, we, we're getting the Nimblarius, we're getting the Sphinxes. I just want to see them all in perfect harmony, and that's looking pretty good, actually. Let's start with Sweet Dreams, Nimblaria, just in case, you know, Ash Blossom, things like that. Always good to bait those out, especially in this deck. So that's what we're going to do, get our Sweet Dreams Demolandia. We're going to go ahead and search out, well, we can search anything we want now. So I'm going to switch out for Quet. Is that, am I pronounced, I, I just call this guy Gooey Sheep. I, I'm not going to pretend to know how this guy's name is pronounced. And let me guess, you have Droll and Lockbird, don't you? Mm, oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Let's go for Dreaming Demolandia then. Let's see where this goes. Got something. Not sure what something, but he's got something. Might be... Oh, what, what would he have? He, he probably has an Ash Blossom somewhere in there. Just doesn't want to use it yet. Got something in there. What on earth kind of hand trap do you got that could be played right now? That's the part I'm worried about. I don't know what he's got. I was thinking Dogwood, too. That's a potential. Let's see. Let's get our Choco Goyle. And let's get our boy Andro. I like to start with Andro Sphinx. I don't know why. He's just like my favorite one. I don't know why. So, and let's go ahead and banish some more cards from our extra deck because I just don't need them. I should mention there is a, a point to banishing all our extra deck because if you get everything gone, Dreaming and Larry, she wakes up from her little dream and starts I don't know, killing younglings and things because that's she's a, she's a Sith Lord and that's what she does. So. 
Yeah, if I get rid of everything in the extra deck but her, I can bring her back, recover my extra deck a bit, and like blanket bounce things to the deck. It's pretty nasty. She throws a bit of a temper tantrum, but then in the end, she's like, I don't know, eight. Hard to say. Facing this off niece. Could be older, could be younger. I don't I don't give a damn. Anyway, so let's summon out our Choco Boy. And that should be good for first turn. I mean, I've got the whole Nemleria set up going. I've got my trap, my pyramid, my imperm. Just gonna hope and pray he doesn't have lightning storm or something to like. And he didn't do anything. Hmm. That's kind of worrisome, actually, that he didn't do anything. I'm, I'm actually a little... A little more worried about that than anything. To be honest, I'm a little worried about the fact that he didn't do anything. Because that implies that he's either holding his cards very well, or he just didn't draw anything. But I, I'm going to lean towards he's holding his cards very well. Feeling me out, saying, what are you up to? My opponent might be a smart person. He might be uh, smarter than the average bear. Possible. I'd be playing Ursarctic to play with it with that. Oh, what have we got? Infinite Imperm. Hmm. Let me think about that. Do I want to do that? Not. Ah, uh, yeah, he's being smart. He's stopping me from targeting stuff. Ironically enough, he put his Imperm in the same column as mine. That is, that's actually kind of funny. Uh, but not so much that my gooey sheep is now negated. That I don't like. What else do we have? Primordial Tremors. 2,000 life. Declare a normal monster's name. And just summon a monster with a clear name from the deck defense position. Normal monster. Uh, once applied, normal. I can't control my battle to the end of the opponent's turn. Huh. What in Ball's name is this? I, mean, I know the, these are that new normal monster support, and okay, it's a blue eyes deck. I don't know why I was surprised by that. Let's see. Normal monsters with their name and primordial the old monsters got to be destroyed by battle and stuff. Okay. That's not necessarily great. Uh, but you have blue eyes, and that's about it. I mean. I have stuff, too. I've got my Repetitor, which I can just blanket negate all your effect monsters. Which, I would assume this guy has a few effect monsters. I mean, it is a Blue Eyes deck. Yeah, it's based off a normal monster. By the way, shout out to this guy for playing the original Blue Eyes artwork. Which I've always liked the most. Uh, and, okay, Blue Eyes alternate dragon. Yeah. That's one would expect. Okay. So I assume what's going to happen, pretty basic thing. Oh no, he's got the prayers. This is that new spell that's absolutely bonkers. Because he gets him a tuner and a spell trap that mentions blue eyes. In an archetype with like a half dozen searches. So not necessarily good. Alright, so let me think. I'm assuming the new maiden, or the old maiden, and then Saga of the Blue-Eyed Dragon. Which just summons out of blue eyes. We only summon blue eyes uh, if you do not control it, and then if you do, 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 do. What in Ball's name is going on here? The basic card from the grave. Do something. Oh, all oh, right. Equipping the blue eyes ultimate dragon. I forgot that was a thing you can do. So we can summon out like tyrant dragon, which. Not affected by traps, can attack all monsters once a piece. Um. All right. It's not necessarily good, but I, if he summons another monster, I can do something about this because my Choco Goyle can make himself stronger, and that will be very useful. Let's see. Add a level one light tuner monster. I'm gonna go with. Uh, well, I want to negate that one. Yes, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna negate this guy. I don't trust him. I don't trust the sage. The sage is not a nice man. All right, and he does still have his that. He does still have that. Goodness gracious, the blue eyes. I mean, I'm. 
It's nice to see old banks get support, but I feel like the blue lines have been just given support line after support line after support line. It's insane. Also, this guy's almost out of time, too, and I really hope he doesn't run out of time, because I still would like to play my pyramid. I really would. What are you going to do? Summon Spirit Drag? You better get ready to end your turn, brother. You're almost out of time. In fact, you might have to end your turn here. You might have no other choice, sir. Because you're almost out of time there. Okay? Yeah, your time... You, you spend too much time tumbling! Oh, that's unfortunate. I mean, to be fair, I could make this thing gain a whole thousand, so I could have beaten over Tyrant Dragon just fine. And, again, I was about to get my... I was just about to get the Sphinxes on the board. I hate it when people do it. They spend so much time comboing, they forget to play the game. That's... Ugh. Doesn't feel good. All right, well, I hate to call that a win, but I guess it technically is. I, I still think I could have easily gotten over this guy. And I could have gone for my extra deck, actually. I could have gone for, like, Juggernaut Libe or something crazy like that in order to start beating over this dude. So... I'll still call this a win. Let's go for one more duel, though, because I feel like we earned ourselves one extra duel today. Let's go into it, and hopefully, hopefully, the last chance of romance will reward us with a thing. All right, everybody, the fourth and final upon the last chance at romance, and we're going to go in first, and with any luck, get our boy on the board. This opening hand, a little rough, but, you know, we have our dreaming Limularia. As long as we have that, we at least have some kind of opening board. I will take it, and it will be good. I also have, t I have double dark holes, so if I get my pyramid of light going, that'd be pretty damn neat. It would. See, this, this is the difficult... Well, th there's a couple things holding back the Thinny and the Sphinxes, all that. One, is it's a little tricky just to, you know, get the pyramid on the board, get the Sphinxes. The Nimler is help, because, again, they are searchable in this deck. But it is hard to get all that going and nuke your own board. Or, you know, if your opponent has to do it. Other thing is, like, seeing today, my opponents are just kind of... People just aren't putting in the effort anymore. You know? If people can't build their giant what's-it boards, they just kind of give up, and that really hurts. That hurts my soul. I'm an old-school duelist, man. I want to see, like... Yeah, I want to see combos. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to see, like, T-set pass again. That's... That's a little too much. I'm just saying, you know, if things don't go right for you, just do the best you can. And don't take 30 minutes to make your board. You know what I'm saying? That, that's all I'm saying, you know. A little bit more back and forth and a little less trying to stop the opponent from playing would really make this game much more tolerable. You talking about a ban list fixing this game? No. The players can fix this game. That's what it's going to take. All right, well, my mini rant aside, we have our Choco, or well, he's at the graveyard. We have our Ice Cream Monster, or we have our Goose Sheep. It's a start. It's not a great start, but it's a start. It's a something. I got the Demilarius going. I I really like my Pyramid. That would be great. One copy of the Pyramid of Light, please. I would love it very much. And I see, ooh, this guy's playing hardball. He's playing the L set pass. That's even more powerful than the T shit. The, the T set pass. Almost said something very inappropriate there. Uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and recover our chocolate golem. Because I can do that thanks to my Repather. Very nice trap indeed. And let's see what. Oh! oh, 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 oh. Now I see my opponents that survive. That, that's always. That, that's been the hard thing today. It's just. Can my opponents please survive? I would appreciate it. All right, so let's go ahead and banish a couple cards. I don't need them right now. Let's get Andro Sphinx, Sphinx Talea. Oh, boy. This might be it, folks. All I need my opponent to do is not rage quit, and we is golden. We is golden, man. We're going to be able to play the Pyramid of Light, and I'm going to summon out the Sphinxes, and then I'm going to blow them up, and then Thinny's going to come out and do next to nothing, but it's going to be hilarious when he does it. All righty. So... Here's what we're going to do. We're just going we're just to battle into this guy. We'll see what he's playing. We don't yet know what he's playing, other than there's an effect veiler involved. This could be a lot of things. It could be literally anything. We'll find out right here. It's Time Thieves. Okay. Okay. I'm learning, 
Play a couple hand traps and time thieves. It makes sense. I gotta try and remember what all the time thieves do, though. I don't remember all their face down stuff. I think it's mostly support for the exceed, but I could be mistaken. Uh, I'm just hoping to nuke the board and nuke these sphinxes at the same time so we can go into Thinian and actually win a duel with his effect. That would be great. All right, but yeah, he's got the time thief for duel. He can place a face-up card on the top of the deck. That no, doesn't really matter to me. Like, that would be annoying, but it's not like a, a problem, so to speak. So to speak, it's not necessarily an issue. Alright, but Time Thief for Doer, nice, nice archetype. The Time Thieves, I think as an archetype, the Time Thieves don't get enough love. The, the, the boss does. He, he's like very generic and very obnoxious in a long-term game. Or right. as for the rest of the archetype, they don't get as much love. Let's see, turn this card, this card is great type materials on the star bench of the field. Yep. So yeah, he can revive the bezel ship if he wanted to. And remind me what the, the, this does. Uh, if face of exceed, leaves a field by card effect. This card's in the graveyard. Okay, now. Ah, Bethel's coming back. And he's got the Time Thief Power Reserve. So I'm going to go off on a limb and say this is that spell I was talking about. That he can put, like, more materials on this. Or, conversely, it's Raider's Wing. Okay. Uh, Raid Raptors, indeed. What are you, you going to try and do? Are you going to make um, Raider's Knight? No. No, you made Perpetua. What does this do again? Uh, stand by. Detach material from this card. Target a Time Thief in the grave. Summon it. Target another exceeds. Attach a Time Thief card from deck to his material. Indeed. I'm, you know what? Trying to make it so this guy doesn't rage quit or anything. I'm just going to let him do this. Uh-huh. Okay, so we'll get another trap onto this thing. Yeah. And then he's going to use its effect again. Cool. Because then this is going to banish itself for a turn, and he's going to put something on top of my deck that I really don't... At, at this point, I don't really care what he puts on top of my deck, because I already have everything I need. For the most part. I mean, yeah, if he got rid of Repetter for a turn, that would be a little annoying. But not like the end of the world annoying. Besides, I would just draw it anyway. So, not that big of a deal. Alright. But yeah, I just want to read the rest of this thing's event. Face up exceed, least if you my card effect. This card, it has to be in the graveyard, though. So, if it tributes for itself, I don't think that recorder comes back. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Alright. The doer detached the flyback. And that should allow him to... Put a face-up card on top of the deck. Oh, what did he hit? Oh, he hit Reveal. Okay. Apparently, he's not a fan. He's not a fan of ice cream. <laughs> yes. I guess that's the case. All righty. And then fly back. That will attach another material onto this. Okie dokie. No, not my spells. I like my spells. Okay. All right. That's, that's fine by me. I, I, I'm okay with this. I'm okay. I mean, he hasn't done any damage or anything. His monsters are... They're there, and he's starting to steal my stuff, but... The, there's only one card. I, I will jinx myself here, but there's only one card he could possibly hit in my deck with Redoer right here that would actually affect me in any way possible. There's only one. Can he draw that one off the top of my deck? Maybe. He has a 1 in 27 chance doing it. We'll find out. What are you doing now? Okay, so that's ending of your turn. Very good. And I think we're good. Yeah. Alright, so Reveal is going to go right there. This Redoer will steal one of my cards off the top of the deck. Let's see what he hits. He chose not to use it. Interesting. Alright, Fear My Light. Here we go. Come on, boys. Here we go. 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 Because he can protect this thing to a degree, but he can't protect everything. Uh, let's go ahead and special shaman. A and 500, Andrew Sphinx. Can't attack, but I don't really care. Doesn't matter. Special summon. Sphinx, the light. 
Indeed. And then we're gonna hit this dude with uh, ye olden dark hole. Dark hole, wipe it all away. Now we'll see how he responds to that. Uh, Cause this trap won't do him any good at the moment. Even if he could attach that, that wouldn't help him. Heavy storm duster. It's not necessarily good. Uh, let me think. What could he hit that would actually hurt me? Target two. Okay, my trap and my spell. Uh, yeah, but I can just protect my stuff. I still, I still want my spells. I still want those. You silly Billy. No effect Baylor for you. Chain link five. Let's make it six. <laughs> no, actually don't. Don't do that. Please don't do that. I, I don't want to be chain link five, six. Five is good. Six, not good. Alrighty, well. Alright, a surprising turn of events. Heavy storm duster. Okay, and yeah, now he's going to use the effect of Verdure to draw and get his Verdure out of there. And Perpetua is going to... Oh, wait a minute. He's going to put a trap on that, isn't he? So we can spin one of my cards back. Uh, we'll find out. Uh, or not. What did he just do? Uh, yeah. Okay, so that... Yeah. Okay. This is fine. This is what we wanted to happen. Possibly. Unless something else was going to happen. Oh, and now the recorder happens. Shoot. Okay, well, I can deal with that. Let's go face the right space! Yeah, there it is. Now, I need to remember what this card does. From the opponent's battle phase, from this card, the damage you take from an opponent's attack is afflicted to the opponent instead. Okay, I can deal with that, I think. Uh, let's activate our Nemleria Revile here. I'm just going to reveal, uh, remove three cards. Going to get Reveal back on the board. Well, yeah, we have Finny and the Great Sphinx here. Uh, which, I didn't get to use this effect to pay 500 to give a 3,000 booster summary. I think something got in the way of that. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Sometimes that happens. It's okay. Now, I am just going to go ahead and get, uh, yeah, Sweet Dreams Nemleria. I, I need to. I should have put this in attack mode, actually, but that's okay. All that matters is I summoned Thidi and the Great Sphinx. Okay, that's the whole point of this deck. And uh, Lord Almighty, I did it. I summoned out Thidi. Now I was hoping to make him huge, so that I could like one shot my opponent with it, but that didn't happen, unfortunately. And I just remembered I only have one card in. Oh. Oh. Oh, I messed up slightly. I should have put this in attack mode. Either way, let's just attack with Finian. Alright, so instead I would take the damage, so obviously I'm not going to do anything there. Yeah, I messed up slightly. Ever so slightly, but it's... We'll find out if that's good or not. We'll find out. That might have actually been a bad idea. I mean, what else was I going to do? What else was I going to do? I mean, I had to do something. Really, all I need to worry about is having Repeater stay on the board right now. Because I have to banish two to activate my Dream Tower. That's the thing. I oh, should have just got back Kuwait. That's what I actually should have done. I should have got back a monster I could have attacked this dude with. Uh, let's see. Attach as a material. Yep. Let me think here. Uh, let's activate Repetter's Effect. Banish the last card in our extra deck. That way, our Dreaming Nim Larry is live now. And we're gonna get ourselves Chocolate Man. I think Chocolate Man is a good choice here. Alright, so the Redoer, this is gonna attach another material. From an opponent's grave as a material. Do I have any traps in the grave? I don't think I do. No. Just monsters and spells. I, I only I do have a few traps, but none of them thankfully are in the graveyard right now. What did you take? Was that my dreaming Nemleria? No, I need that. One good thing though is now he can't uh, trade out Redure right now, unless it has a monster material. It doesn't do that. The 
Balls is calling, texted me. Oh, that's just junk. Okay. What do we got? Drawing another card. Understandable. No, just taking more of my stuff. Stop taking my stuff. It's mine. It's very much mine, but you know what? This has been the best duel today. You know, all the other duels, kind of disappointing, honestly, because people just, you know, you interrupt them, or they don't get their combos, they just don't do anything. But this guy, his deck is simple enough, he can play through the punch. He can, he can go rolling through the punches, and that's good. We're getting a nice back and forth, that I can appreciate. Let's see. Giant Thief, you see, attached three kind thief cards from the grave to that mod. Ooh, boy. That's pretty nasty, because he does have time thief cards in the grave. He has that trap I just remembered as a thing, so he might be my banishing Thinian, and that will suck, because I like Thinian. I wanted Thinian to one-shot this guy, but unfortunately, I didn't get to pay my life points, and I put this guy in defense mode. That was a, that was a problem. I, I'm so used to putting Reveal in defense. I, I, I kind of just kind of automatically did it. Regardless, what are you going to do now, sir? You have plenty of time, so take your time thinking. But yeah, you have this startup, which is absolutely cracked of a card. Well, actually, no. You don't have a Time Thief spell in the grave right now, so you can't use that. That's right. You need a Time Thief spell as well. Yeah. He does, though, have the Raider's Wing, so that's something. Okay. See, now he's going to summon Raider's Knight, isn't he? Now he's going to do that. Oh, boy. Uh, that, I should have saved the Repather. I maybe should have saved the Repather for that. Uh, well, I wouldn't have been able to do that anyway. That banished three cards, so it doesn't matter either way. God, you got Magician. What does this do? Turning seeds in the grave, except for itself, summon it and negate its effects. Uh, okay. Oh, well, you have, do you have, like, Mega Clops? Maybe. Because this doesn't do anything at the moment. This does nothing at the moment. This is effects that are negated. So it's not going to do you any good. I'm reading Mega Clops, but I could be mistaken. But, ah. Uh... Ah, I was right. Okie dokie. Unexpected by monster effect except for Xyz monsters. Well, gosh darn it, Thinian. You actually got outplayed because this thing's bigger than you are. And it actually can also bring back an Xyz monster and attach a material, which is not good for me. Does it only work on... Uh, it's any card I control. Alright, I will... I will no! The Panther! I mean, that's, that's the card that makes the most sense, but still. Well, gosh darn it. Thinian, you finally got on the board and now you're dead. Why couldn't you have been a better boss monster? You fool. Alright, well, that's... At least I summoned him. I'll, I'll take what little I can get from there. Alright, so now it's our turn. Alright, so Fortress Megaclops is on the board. Perpetua's on the board. And let's let you... Okay, the one thing is... Where's that recorder guy? Or is he banished now? He is banished. That's good. That's a good thing. Alright, don't stand by face. That's material. It's hard to time thief in the grave. Summon that monster back. Yeah. The one problem for me right at the moment... Is normally this is one where I... Well, I'll probably still go for Dreaming in Blarry, actually. Probably still the best thing to do here. Because I can bring this back. Recover a few cards. Spin a few cards back into the deck. It's something. It's something. Although, Redoer, who are you stealing? That's the question. Another trap. Finally hit one of my traps, did you? Alright. Dreaming of Larry, come forth and do the thing you do. Unless he has a negate, which he might. He ain't gonna stop this too well. Time thief for doer, putting a card back on top of the deck. That's fine, I have another drum lariat just in case. Okay, we get the bash five cards. So one, two, three. Uh, let's see, four. And. Uh, 
Actually, hold on one second. I gotta think about this better. I might actually have to leave the monsters alone for this. Right? Because this, let's see, let's see, 500 attack priority monster. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to banish his monsters at the moment. I actually want to keep them around. So I'm going to banish the base down. Banish that. Banish three. Banish four. Banish five cards. Then I get to recover five cards. Doesn't really matter who, but I'll get Gustav because I can use it. I'm going to get Gengardai because I can use it. I'll get my Tunatissus because I can technically use them, but really it doesn't matter what I do. Not at the moment, sir. Let's go ahead and banish. <laughs> Let's just banish them again. That's what they do, Nimlarius. Okay, so Reveal's there. So we're going to get our Quet. We're going to get another Choco Goyle. Very good, very good. We'll special summon out our Chocolate Man. Because you already use these effects. We'll special summon our gooey sheep. And then we're going to special... Oh, where'd he go? Yeah, there he is. Special summon or veil. Ah, uh, there he is. And then I could put... Let's see. Let's see. Place this card from the grave to the bottom of the deck. Target to Dream and Nimler. You control. Add to the extra deck face up. Well, I could do that, but I only need to do that at the moment. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, wait, I need to have a face down card back to your deck. Shoot. I uh, may have slightly messed that up. You know what? Screw it. <laughs> Screw it, Memphis. You're making mistakes, and you need to just beat over the time thief or doer, and then, you know, do stuff next turn. You know why? Because, you know what you're going to do? You're just going to dark hole this. <laughs> just dark hole. Get out of here. Everybody go away. Everybody go away. Memphis is making misplays. We're just going to blow up the board so no one can see it. All righty. My goodness, this has been a nice back and forth. I, I'm, I'm loving this duel more than all the others, and I appreciate that. What do you have? Time? Oh, boy. Now, there's the top deck for you. I still have my Numlaria, though, so I'm good. I don't I don't see this guy one-shotting me here. Not if I can help it. Yeah, really, I, I kind of got a brain for it. I was thinking of using... My Choco Man to beat over the Mega Clops. What I, I should have done is just play Dark Hole and then summoned everybody and then rammed over them. That would have been game right there, so. I guess kind, I kind of already won, but I, I haven't yet, is what I'm trying to go for. I should win in a minute, so long as this guy doesn't make another Mega Clops. Because I don't think I have another card that can out the Mega Clops at the moment. Not really. He's immune to everything that's not an Xyz monster. What is this? Temp Whaler. Okay. I, I, I'm going to skip ahead until it's my turn because this duel is getting a little long. So I'll be back as soon as uh, this guy's done. All righty. Well, my opponent, you've made quite the play. You did summon Utopic Future. That is true. Does this... It does negate my stuff, doesn't it? Ooh, boy. I mean, I could just summon a Railer, but I don't think that really helps me because... Oh, I think I just lost. Damn this thing. Utopic Draco Future. I despise this creature. Damn it. I think I just lost because of this. Um, I just have anything else. Uh, because it negates me, and now I'm not going to be able to use Dreaming Nemlaria, and he's going to steal this. And Gosh dang it. That is such a pain in the patoot. It really is. I, I don't have anything else I can do. Gosh, I wish I could banish my pendulums, but I can't. That would be really helpful, but I can't. How many materials? This has three materials, so... Maybe there's... I don't know. There's nothing I can really do here. You know, I might lose this duel. This, I can, <sighs> It sucks, because a Reller would normally be great, but this can't be beaten in battle, which is really annoying. Gosh darn it. I I should have won this duel, but I just I messed up. I messed up my numbers and I messed up my effects, and that is unacceptable. So that that's a hard loss on me, but it's a loss nonetheless. But at least we had a good time, I would say, with this last duel. I had a great time. This was a great back and forth. Uh, I just don't well 
What are the odds he has nothing? Well, even if he didn't, it doesn't matter. There's nothing else in my deck that can help me, so I'd say I've lost this duel. Yeah, because he has the Time Thief for Winder. Unless he detaches another material from this, which I don't see him doing. Uh, I say I've lost, so let's go for the end phase, everybody. We'll talk more about this deck there. Alrighty, everybody. So, our Nemlarian Sphinx deck, we went... I, I want to call this two wins, one loss. I think that's reasonably fair. My opponents that we beat today really... They didn't get the heart. They didn't put their heart into things. You know, you stop their flow, their combo. They just kind of gave up, and that's becoming more and more common in Yu-Gi-Oh these days. It really is. It really it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good at all. Uh, but we got to show off the deck fairly well. And Larry, as long as you get your Pendulum Monster, it works out just fine. We have Searchers galore for getting our into the extra deck and getting our Dream Tower set up. And once you go from there, it just kind of falls into place. You know, you get your Nimlarians, you get your Sphinxes, you blow up your Sphinxes, you get your Thinian. So, that's the name of the day's deck, and you know what? Mission accomplished. We summoned Thinian. At least we had that one great duel against the Time Thief guy. That was great. I wish I could have won those. I, I could have won if I just my brain farted, you know? What happens when you don't get enough sleep? Or Memphis? I don't, I don't know what sleep is anymore. Uh, but yeah, regardless of all that, had a good time with today's deck. Really enjoyed it. I, one of my passions is just trying to summon out these really annoying boss monsters in Yu-Gi-Oh! They're either not so good or just really hard to summon. Like Halacti, that was a great one. And Thidian was another great one. So, having a lot of fun. Hope you guys did too. If you did, don't forget to smack the like button. If you're new, consider subscribing to the channel. E either way, go in the comments and let me know what you thought about this deck. What you think of Thidian and monsters like him as a whole. So... Here's the deck list for y'all who want to try this deck out. I realized in post I made a slight mistake and I might have translated it in the actual episode, but I fixed it just now. So here's the deck. We have one copy of Thinian the Great Sphinx because we don't need any more of him. Two copies each of Andros Sphinx and Sphinx Talea, which is our main monsters for him. We have three copies of Nemlaria the Ice Cream Man. Three copies of Nemlaria the Chocolate Ogre. Three copies of our Nemlaria Goo Sheep. We have three copies, of course, of Dark Sith Lord Dreaming Nemlaria. Two copies of the Pendulum Treasure, as if you happen to have your Dream Tower, but you don't have Nimlaria, because you kind of need both of these for this to work, then you can just use this to put Nimlaria face up in your extra deck. Three copies of Sweet Dreams Nimlaria, which is like our most important search em up spell, because it not only gets Dreaming Nimlaria, but you can also place the Dreaming Nimlaria from your board into your spell trap zone in case weird things happen. Uh, three copies of Tokusano Shikidiki, which is a draw spell, just ditch to level 10, draw two cards, very nice, especially with our Ice Cream Man. Two copies of Dark Hole, because we just want to blow up our board without any sort of fluff getting in the way. One copy of Call By, because we search a lot in this deck. Three copies of the Dream Tower, because it searches out all of our monsters. And, yeah, it also protects our stuff, which didn't really come to play today, but... That's another thing that happens. If, if our monsters would be destroyed by an opponent's card, I can protect them. Uh, three copies of Perm, in case we're going second. Nice to just be able to interrupt our opponent's flow a bit. One Waking the Dragon, which is our funky tech card, in case our opponent just tries to nuke our back row. We can summon out the nasty big uh, monsters onto our opponent, which can be whatever you'd like them to be. Uh, two copies of Dogmatic Punishment. Just that more interrupting of my opponent gets cards out of the extra deck, that sort of thing. We don't summon out of the extra deck half the time, so this is a nice thing to have. One copy of Demnalaria Repetar, which is allowing us to recover cards, have damage, or just negate everything on the board for a turn. And then, last but certainly not least, we have the two Pyramids of Light, which I've gone between one and two. But I feel that one is not consistent enough, three is too consistent. So two, I would say, is good. Actually, the extra deck, it does not matter for the most part what you have in your extra deck because we don't summon out of it. The only things that really matter in the extra deck are things like Natis for using with Dogmatic Punishment, some big fusions or synchros if you'd like or whatever have you may that you can summon off of Waking the Dragon. I recommend things like Dragoon, Punish, or Phoenix Enforcer, Last Warrior, things of that nature, wh whatever you want to do from there. Uh, also, some rank 10 exceeds that you can make, things like Gustav Max and Gengardai, you can summon these off of the Sphinxes if you happen to not be going into the Nimlaris for whatever reason. Or if the Nimlaris last a turn and you just need to do some burn damage, these are good there. And then all these links are just like very generic things like Underworld Goddess and Saryuja, Code Talker, Appaloosa. These are things that are conceivably makeable, but you almost never do. They're all just 
an engine for the Demarius. You just have to have a full extra deck for this archetype to work, really. You could get all the way with using less cards in the extra deck, for sure, but I think your cards are going to be less consistent. So we play a full extra deck, and that's what you do with it. So as for the side deck, I consider Dangerous as another draw engine, but that would be a completely different setup in all likelihood and all facthood, for that matter, because they're level 8s and not level 10. If Bigfoot was level 10, I would say definitely run him. Uh, there's things like Dark Hole Dragon, which is just a searcher for Dark Hole. It's a neat little thing. If your opponent's playing a lot of back row heavy thing, go ahead for a Harpy's Feather Duster of your own. There's things like End Exalting Morganite, which is a new spell, which just makes it so your monsters can attack twice. They do double battle damage when they're battling into things. You can't use effects in the hand, though, so it does slow down Reveal a little bit. But other than that, it's not bad. Not not a bad spell. You could consider using that one as well. Another to light up or Sphinx, depending on what you want to do. And then if you just want to go for straight up beat sticking people, especially with the Morganite, consider just straight up skill draining people. You know, don't, doesn't matter what they have if they just don't have effects. Just beat over them with twenty five hundred beat sticks. They'll have a hard time. Trust me. So that's the deck, everybody. Hope you enjoy. Next time we're looking at the newer ish Exodia stuff, and maybe we'll take a look at the Blue Eye stuff too. Because they have a whole new play style again, so might as well take a look at that too. So, till next time, we born Memphis signing out. I'll see you guys again very soon. Until then, y'all stay safe and happy, and y'all have a good one. Take care.